Hey guys, Jerome JT62 back here on the Pegasus 12. Um, in this video, what we're going to look at is installing uh, lead screws and removing the stock. Um, five millimeter all thread you can see the difference in what you're getting if you go to eBay these kits are everywhere they're they're on uh, eBay Amazon but most of them they still come out of China so this took a while to get it a little bit a couple weeks so be prepared for that these are 500 millimeter leads uh, they don't need to be that long uh, but I wasn't sure on how much or where I was going to need to position the bearings comes with uh, two bearings the coupling flex type lead screw nut <clears throat> and the lead screw and I only need one of those bearings. Um, this is how they're going to be mounted. If you look here, I'm not going to use the flex type coupling. I bought a solid 5 millimeter to 8 millimeter. And that's the lead screw nut that's going to connect here. This comes up from the side here. There's a little bit of a shot so you can see what it's going to look like. I'll probably end up cutting that off flush with this. Um, and then on this side, I'm going to end up using uh, L bracket. I have an aluminum L bracket I'm just going to put in there. I also purchased these uh, drop in or roll in T nuts for 2020. Uh, that way, you need to put something in these frames let's just say in this one up here where it's closed off uh, they just roll in here like that so uh, they're very inexpensive uh, five millimeter 2020 uh, if you're interested in doing that so what I had ended up doing I had to remove the stepper motor and that bracket back there those have to come off and they need to be spaced off or whether you use a flex type coupling or this it won't fit uh, I don't know if that's going to focus for me but it won't fit it ended this frame there's an interference so that's three sixteenths uh, spacer that I drew up in CAD, cut it out on the um, mill downstairs on the fine line. Uh, also, these are the, uh, this is what captures the, the lead nut, which they go right here. So they are a little bit different. The dimensions are the same, but the cutouts need to be a little bit different so uh, on my machine down there these take about less than two minutes each to cut out so uh, the whole pattern in here i'll probably just i'm going to hand drill those because uh, i don't have a drill to put on that machine to, to drill through and then tap them out so i'm just going to do that by hand and um We'll get this together. Um, I got a little bit more to go, um, which is up here, which is a bracket. So once I get that on there, then we'll come back and see what all this looks like. Hey guys, um, down on the fine line automation 4x4 four four. Uh, what we have to do is cut out uh, spacers 
uh, so that we can put the lead screw. Um, then I plan on installing on the 3D printer on, otherwise uh, they won't fit. And I'll show you what I'm talking about once I get these cut out. Uh, this does them pretty quick, probably less than three minutes. Um, I already did one of them, but I just thought I'd show you this. This is, a, you know, some of the first real parts I've actually cut with this machine, other than test cuts. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to zero here. And I think I'm just cutting through just enough so I don't get through the paper so this shouldn't break free on me. Uh, I had a little bit of issues with tabs, but um, we'll go ahead and get this started and so you can see, uh, see a little bit of this and then we'll get back on the uh, 3D mill or 3D printer. Sorry about that. So here we go. Pressure coming on, but sorry about that. Get back on the uh, mill, or the kitchen mill. 
uh, back up on the 3D printer and I'll show you what I'm going to do with these spacers. So I ended up not using um, L bracket up here like I thought I was going to be able to. Um, it just wasn't going to work out. Uh, there was no way that I could uh, put these bearings on. Um, so I ended up going back down to the CNC mill and doing a drawing up and routed out these uh, bearing holders. I'm just lucky when I went to tap plastics the other day to get you know a bunch of uh, scrap or look for small pieces like to machine these uh, lead lead nut holders. Um, they had this in the bin. It was like two dollars, and um, it's a half inch thick. So come to find out, it's the perfect size for these bearings. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. So the end product of this whole assembly, this is what it looks like here. That idler right there, I ended up having to shave that down. Um, I was hitting the coupling. So I had to take like a, probably an eighth inch off on a belt sander. So this is the top section. I thought this was black. It ended up smoke. Yeah, it was good enough. I would have liked black, but at least if it starts cracking, I can see it right away. I don't think it's going to crack. It's a quarter inch thick. Those are three millimeter tap screws are tapped into the um, holder itself comes up and this is what it's going to look like when it's uh, complete. I just got to put the two top screws in. Um, I'll probably leave that lead screw. Uh, I mean I can cut it with a die grinder. I'm not not sure it's, it's worth it. Um, so, I'll think about it. I'm going to have to slide this uh, stepper motor all the way to the right. Um, because it's touching the side of the frame here. Uh, the lead screw. And I think this one I ended up. When I put it on, I slid it all the way right. And I got to slide this one all the way right. I need another eighth inch clearance in there. So, not a big deal on that. And that will wrap up the lead screw installation. And if you guys are, you know, interested in, you know, me machining these brackets out for you, I already have the you know, the DXF, I can probably do that for you. You know, we can talk about it. Um, it's way quicker than printing them. You can print them, but, you know, do whatever. But uh, I wanted to not have to disassemble anything and install these later on because I knew it was going to take a while. So I've been working on these for a couple of days. Uh, back and forth with the CAD drawings and getting the feeds and speeds down for this plexi so it doesn't melt to cut it. Uh, it ends up being uh, 17,000 RPM and 38 feet per minute is perfect for cutting plexiglass. This stuff, uh, I'm not too sure on it. Uh, you know, I got, I'm blowing the chips out, but, you know, when it's done cutting, it still seems, there seems to be a coating on the, uh, on the end mill, so... But it, you know, it still cuts clean. Uh, you can see the the edge in on that, and the plexi is just as clean as this. Cuts really clean. Two flute uh, up end mill is what I used. So 
we'll wrap this one up. Uh, in the next video, we'll get on to getting this heat bed on here. Um, I already have a piece of glass. We'll talk about that. Uh, we possibly could get the hot end together. I may just do a separate video on that. But uh, At any rate, we'll close this out. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching.